All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna be printing with PA6 carbon fiber. Recently, Bamboo Labs added this to their lineup of all of the filaments they had, and I was wondering what the use case would be for it and what it took to print with it. So I went ahead and ordered a half a roll of it. Wasn't the cheapest filament that I've ever had, at $45 for a half a roll. Um, but I thought it would make a good video and let's see what this is about and hopefully we can learn a little bit about it. So today we'll be going through how to dry and do all of that stuff with it. We'll learn about AMS compatibility and how to print with it. We'll go ahead and try to do some tuning and then we'll print one of the Nimitz Benchies that the channel is known for and um, test everything out. Along the way, if I find any tips and tricks, I'll let you know what I find out so that you can learn from this experience. So, if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. All right, so here we go. Let's get it out of the box. And do pay attention to which side of the bag that you open because one does have a ziplock on it, the other one doesn't. And this one is a little bit easier to get a hold of at first, so make sure you take the time to get on this one with the uh, ziplock on it so that you can reseal this back up once you've dried it. And there we go. So let's get this inside of the X1 and start the drying process. All right, here we are on the front of the bamboo X1. So what we'll need to do is go to the little switches right here, up to utilities, dry filament, and we're gonna select the PACF right there. And we'll see that it's set for eight hours at 80 C. And if you just click on the numbers here, you can change that. So eight hours. And we need 80 C. We'll go ahead and prepare. And then we'll go ahead and get the filament loaded in there with the cover and then <clears throat> we'll go ahead and hit the start button. All right, so what is PA6CF and why might you use it? So PA6CF stands for polyamide six with carbon fiber. This 3D printing filament blends the properties of PA6, a type of nylon, with the strength of carbon fibers. Here's what makes PA6CF a special filament and its key applications. Um, so it's really good at mechanical strength. Um, you know, with the addition of carbon fibers, it greatly enhances the filament's tensile strength, stiffness, and overall mechanical durability. And we saw references of that on their, or we'll see references of that on their website. It's very lightweight. While it provides enhanced strength, the filament is also lightweight due to the carbon fibers, which makes it suitable for applications where weight is a critical factor. So in your next project, if uh, weight is a critical factor, this might be something to uh, consider. Heat resistance. Um, so on the website, we'll see where it lines up with all of the other filaments, but it is up at the upper end of it. There's only a couple of filaments that are more heat resistant than this. Uh, reduced warping. Um, so carbon fibers can reduce the amount of warping compared to pure PA6 through printing condition. Those printing conditions still need to be optimized to ensure that, right? And some of those optimizations are enclosure and all of that stuff. Wear resistance. Um, so PA6 CF has improved wear resistance, making it suitable for parts that might undergo repeated friction. Um, so that's another thing to consider. And then electrical uh, conductivity, the carbon fibers can can give the filament a certain level of electrical conductivity, making it useful for specific niche applications. 
All right, here we are in the slicer. So let's get this ready for the PA6. Um, so the first thing that we'll need to do is set the model up with one of these uh, filament slots here. And then when we go to print it, we'll tell it not to use the AMS and it'll carry that stuff over. So I usually use the first slot right here, but you will notice when I go in here and I try to change to PA6, you'll notice that it's not available in here. And the reason for that is I haven't um, updated with their new filaments um, since they put some new ones out. And um, once they put new filaments out or anything like that, it doesn't update in this menu, but it does update in this gear menu right here. So you'll see that uh, PA6 carbon fiber here isn't checked because it's new. Generally when that happens, I go ahead and hit all cause I want access to all of them in case I um, get one of these, I want to be able to use it right away. So I'll go ahead and hit confirm. And now you'll see when I go in here, we have access to PA six CF and we'll go ahead and change the color to black. And there we have that. Okay, a couple other things that I changed is I did install a 0.6 nozzle. We do have the high temperature plate in there. We're going to go ahead and print a Benchy first, and then we'll do some of the calibrations. We will let it do its uh, initial calibration right here, um, and then we'll set the calibrations. And I just want to show that right out of the box, just drying it, putting it on the side, loading a model, you know, changing your nozzle size and your plate, which you need to do with any of them. And you'll go and we'll go ahead and print with this. I haven't changed any of these other settings here except for no support and ooh, brim is on there. And I usually have no brim, but you'll also notice that this is the 0.3 millimeter standard for the 0.6 nozzle. And since this is all set up for um, this, let's go ahead and save it as the 0.3 Lenny setup, right? And I would recommend this for you guys so you don't have to go back in here and do all of this stuff. So we'll go ahead and set that as the 0.3 for our 0.6 nozzle, high temperature plate, and we have the PA6 loaded in here. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and slice this. And we will see that it's giving us a warning about overhangs, which I haven't seen on this model before, but it does have a few overhangs on it. So we'll see if it's able to print um, without any support. So you see a little bit over an hour, about an hour and 20 minutes total time since we're going to let it do its calibration. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, you know, right out of the box, let's go, go ahead and see how it prints. Um, so we will enable flow dynamics there. And you'll see here, please cl uh, click each filament above to specify its mapping AMS slot before sending the print job. And as we know, this is not in the AMS and how you tell it to you, you're not using the AMS, as you can see by hovering over this question mark is, and we want disable AMS to print with filament on external spool. Well, all we do is uncheck this box and you'll see that that warning went away and that now we're ready to uh, print from the filament spool or the external spool. All right, so I'll go ahead and send that to the printer. And right, so here we are on the product page. And as you can see, $43 for half a roll here, uh, pretty expensive stuff, um, but it is nylon and carbon fiber. And as you can see, really functional parts um, meant for wear and tear. And you'll see that they, um, you know, superior strength and stiffness. And they're showing, you know, like holders for your tools, maybe out in your wood shop or something like that. Hold downs, um, you know, electrical boxes might be another good use uh, case for this. You'll see that they show some improvements over normal PA uh, carbon fiber. You can see some of the things that you can print out of it. I mean, you'll see in the range of, you know, heat resistance and everything where it lies. Um, so if that helps with the next project that you're doing, it's right around in this range is what it can handle. So a little bit more than ABS, ASA, or PC. So if you need um, high temp um, for that, but don't want to use PAHT or PETCF, then that's a really good one for that. 
Um, so not compatible with the AMS. We did dry it out. It is required. Enclosures required. And here's all the techno babble with that. The recommended plates. You see hardened steel 0 0.4, 0 0.6 recommended. And I really do use the 0 0.6 on all the carbon fiber ones. Um, glue stick or the liquid glue. So that's good. Not recommended with the cool plate and not recommended with the stainless steel nozzles or the 0.2 nozzle. All right, here's the density. So we will see a, a lower density than we've seen with some things. And then the drying time, as we saw in the beginning of the video here. All right, so let's take a look at how the first uh, Benchy uh, printed, and then we'll get to doing some calibrations. All right, so now let's talk about some of the things that you might print with PA6 carbon fiber or nylon carbon fiber. Uh, drones and RC vehicles, you know, given its lightweight and durable properties, it's suitable for drones or radio controlled vehicle parts. I see a lot of you guys out there printing uh, radio controlled stuff, so this might be a good material to use for some of those parts. Tools and manufacturing for like making jigs and fixtures and stuff like that. Sports equipment, um, we saw in the on the website they had a bicycle pedal you can also use it for robotics for parts that need to be both lightweight and have strength properties and electronic enclosures especially for devices that require some level of electromagnetic interference shielding given the filament electrical conductivity so these are some of the things that you might use pa6 carbon fiber for All right, so let's have a look at the Benchy, and I will say the quality is really good, and on all of the overhangs as well, you'll see that it did a pretty good job. I don't see any stringing or anything like that. So overall, looks really, really good. All right, so since we can't do the calibration, let's go ahead and get our uh, sample filament printed out, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So let's go ahead and get this sliced. So the little sample take about 42 minutes, and we will let it do its calibration there because it did a good job with the Benchy, as we saw. And let's go ahead and get this printed, and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, so as you can see, it printed out just fine. And we have our filament sample as well as a Benchy. And I will say the Benchy came out fine. It did give us that warning about the overhangs, but <clears throat> it printed the overhangs fine. There was no stringing or no gaps or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> it's smooth on the bottom, but not anywhere else. It's kind of rough, but it is smooth on the bottom. On the sides of this one, it's not the smoothest filament that I've ever used before. Um, so I can definitely see why you shouldn't run it through the AMS. It is kind of weird that they don't allow you to calibrate it through the calibration system when using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, especially when that's the one that's recommended and that's the one that I would recommend that you use as well. Um, and I'm not going to use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle um, on the video because I've had bad experiences with running carbon fiber through those before and it generally clogs it up and I can't run anything else through it. So we won't be doing that today, but I did enjoy printing all of this. So if you do need a lightweight heat resistant um, filament for like some jigs, some RC car parts, uh, sports equipment, you know, different things that need high wear and tear, but may also need some uh, high heat resistance or something like that, and you also want it to be lightweight, then PA6 carbon fiber might be the right one for you. So I really did enjoy uh, making today's video, and I hope you enjoyed liking it. And if you did, be sure to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. And I will see everybody next week. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.